how's it? Um, I'm over on the west coast of the South Island at the moment. Um, I've decided to kind of get out from behind the camera and uh, show you guys what I get up to when I'm on my uh, solo missions. Uh, this mission in particular, what I'm after is a chamois buck over that 10 inch mark. For me, it's a huge, hugely about the challenge and can you, can you challenge of finding that animal and then actually putting in a successful stalk. So, you know, you can find many, many chamois on the alpine, alpine tops, but can you find that, that one out of 300 that, that ticks that trophy class and is just a monster. Uh, I've seen a few in my time, but haven't made a successful stalk due to terrain, weather, and other things. So I'm hoping on this mission that I can, yeah, find that elusive chamois buck. Um, this mission in particular, it's gonna be quite hard yards. So it's gonna take me over a couple mountain ranges and hunting on the tops along there. So as I go along, I'm gonna kind of share an insight into how I hunt and the tips and knowledge I use to help me get the shots that I want and, and hopefully to make a successful stalk on any chamois bucks that I see that are in that, that class. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this and it's always, it's always gonna be an epic, so.
holding it. Uh, makes this visibility pretty hard at the moment. Yeah, fun times on the coast, eh? Just constant play. day it's been so far. I um struggling to see Shammy all, all morning and then I was just making up my way up to this high point. I slowly look over over each kind of rise and then all of a sudden I look over and then I see just this like young chamois buck only maybe like 15 yards away. Uh, I was trying to get the camera on him 
when he was just there trying to sneak in, but he quickly he figured it out once I was trying to set up. So then he bolted, so I got some good footage of him. Uh, I've actually gone over to his next catchment and it is just absolutely jam-packed full of chamois. It's bloody awesome. Put in these proper hard yards to try and find these animals. But uh, yeah, this this catch, catchment is holding heaps of chamois, like just scattered all throughout. Uh, probably seen about eight or nine so far, uh, which is which is really really good. But hey, it's all it's all looking promising. Hopefully, we can find that that elusive chamois buck that goes over that 10 inch mark. But if not, hey, it's magic country, and really enjoying the journey so far.
it's been a next level, I guess, day in this catchment. Uh, I've had just the absolute pleasure of spending or thereabouts an hour within 40 yards of a family of six chamois. Uh, truly amazing experience. I've got some great photo photographs and, and good video footage. Uh, one, the mama doe and her two kind of yearlings I'd say. They got within probably 15 yards. They just fed over to where I was. I stayed dead still and they came all the way to me and I got some yeah, it's just just epic, just an epic kind of experience to just watch these wild animals go on about their day. Uh, that was a family of six, so I spent time with them, and then there's a mob of four I saw, there was another mob of two, and there was a few little lone like young bucks just floating around, so wicked catchment for Shammy. Now uh, it's been bloody awesome, so yeah, I'll see, hopefully, I'm hoping to see a few deer in this catchment. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good country for it, but who knows but hey it's been bloody awesome awesome that just having a, a chamois at about 15 yards stay there for about 20 minutes just going about its day and then it realizes that you're something but it's staring at you but hey just that that close encounters that's what it's all about really awesome
stuff. I love the mental and physical challenge of all this. You just take one meter at a time, just get it done. No complaining, no excuses. You just get to the top.
way down off that that main ridge. There's a bit of a corner, so I had to try and pick a line and just slowly make my way down. Um, but just before that, I was just uh, having a wee break, and then saw like a lone buck just pop up on the snow face. So he came trotting over to about 100 yards. So I quickly got the camera on him, assessed him. He had decent length, as you may see, but just didn't have the hooks that you're looking for when you're trying to get over that that 10 inch mark so a lot of guys shoot you know bucks that go nine nine and a half inches and generally they're just lacking that hook so if you've got the hook and the length and you're well over that 10 mark but now nah, nonetheless there's awesome experience glad I didn't pull the trigger it's better to evaluate them first and be better be safe than sorry really isn't it so now nah, bloody good so now I've got to try and find my way down this last I guess crux of the descent and then it's then it's safety which I'm bloody looking forward to <laughs> as it looks. Whew, but the snow is pretty good. I quite I feel pretty safe to be honest so just keep your technical skills up, don't make any mistakes and be sweet as but you see down there that's the bottom. Which I'm very much looking forward to getting down to hopefully see a chamois or two along the way. Oh it's good to be down. Uh, made my way safely down that, that steep section of snow. So I was quite lucky that the snow was quite firm and then I got to glissade half foot. I guess you've got to be careful when you're glissading, you've got to make sure you control your speed and just making sure that the snow, can, snow is consistent, doesn't turn to ice because that's what gets a lot of guys when that snow turns to ice and then you just run out of, you just run out of control, you just go top speed and you can't regain yourself. Yeah, so many, many alpine accidents happen because of glissading so you've got to be careful. So the plan now is I'm going to head down to the valley floor, set up camp, and then hunt a next catchment, see if I can glass scan or glass for more chamois. Now, I haven't seen any deer, but I know this area has been 1080 quite heavily, uh, and the choppers have had it pretty hard, so yeah, I haven't seen one deer, I haven't seen too much sign of deer, but I'm not here for deer anyway. Truck, but the reason 
reason I wanted to come here on the circuit is also to check out the hot pools, which are just around the corner. Oh, it's going to be so good. After scaling two mountain ranges, it's going to be bloody nice just to relax in those hot pools. Certainly well earned. Woo! So, while I'm hut bound at the moment, I thought I'd just run through uh, why, why I actually tr try to walk down backwards sometimes down the mountain. Uh, you might have seen a couple of clips where I'm yeah, just going down backwards rather than going down forward. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, if you just first reason, I guess, if you just got your, you got your boots, so the old boots here. If you look at the tread, it generally kind of angles like this in some form or another. So when you're making steps up, it cuts in, and then as you push up, then it grips and then you're able to you know go up the mountain without slipping when you go down the grip doesn't seem to dig or bite as much as if you're facing forward just due to probably weight distribution and also that tread pattern so by turning around and going backwards what you allow yourself is you you get closer into the mountain you can put more weight through through your through your boots and then that grip is a lot that grip is enabled so as you go down then the grip does its job it bites and, and prevents you slipping so that's one reason um, I find it hugely effective on like scree and even tussock and other things so you know if you're about to if you slip and you are going down backwards and you're very much facing forward then you got your hands ready to go so you just hands out grab whatever you need to and then support yourself and get back to your feet if you're going down forward then if you slip you're either on your ass or you're on your ass and then tumbling a long way so you've I just it takes a bit of practice and yeah it's not something you should just jump straight into you've got to get used to having a load on your back and and then allow it just kind of get that get that flow yeah it can it's a bit awkward to start with but once you get that flow you can really hoon downhill so another reason I do it as well is that a lot of hunters complain about having sore knees especially when they get older and that's largely due to the downhill phase and when you're hunting so everyone's like oh yeah sweet as my knees are fine on the uphill as soon as I go downhill then that's when my knees start to hurt so when you go down backwards what it allows what it effectively does is it loads your knee correctly so we want to maintain what we call like a, a vertical shin position yeah when we start loading our knee on a non-vertical shin position Effectively, it overstresses the patella joint or the the knee. Okay, and what that does is over repetitive usage and incorrect loading of that knee, that leads to damaged patella tendons and damaged meniscus. So, by going down backwards, what you enable is correct loading of that knee, and you maintain that vertical shin position. So, you're not overstressing that patella tendon and you are just correctly loading and you go down and I can for me myself I blitz down downhill when I go backwards and my knees don't hurt at all uh, if you go down forward you definitely start to feel it because there's an over straining of that patella tendon through excessive what we call anterior loading of the knee so I highly advise guys you give it a go practice just on a small hill and tell me if you notice a difference 
Well, I guarantee you will notice the difference in how sore your knees are going downhill and then progress that. So start small and then go big. And then once you get confident, then you can apply it on the hills. Uh, it is so effective when you're going down scree. It really is. Yeah, you're not slipping a slide on your ass. And even you slip and slide, you've got your hands to protect yourself. So yeah, give it a go team. Um, obviously where applicable and where you feel confident. But otherwise, yeah, I think you got your body for there on 80 years. And as hunters, our knees are kind of like our Achilles heel. Once they go, then it really restricts our, our movements and our ability to go climb and then come back down because due to the pain. So, got your body for 80 years, you want to look after it, you want to load it correctly. So, by reducing the anterior loading on the knee, hopefully it prolongs your hunting career and your hunting knees, which, which we need to climb those mountains to get the big game. Anyway guys, give it a go. Ends finally come. Oh, I've made it back, back to the truck, all in one piece. It has been raining non-stop for about 24 hours now, so I'm pretty soaked. Looking forward to getting some some dry clothes, but nonetheless, bloody bloody happy with my efforts, and it's very fulfilling knowing when you you set yourself a goal of going over two mountain ranges, and then you actually get it done. So it's been bloody awesome to be able to tick that one off, and I guess. As I finish and I'm looking at looking at the trip as a whole and what drives me and things, it's you gotta really have that kind of that desire and that, that mental toughness just to just to keep pushing. Next spur, ten more minutes, another hundred meters, climb that, climb that spot height, next spot height, and so forth. And you just keep going and going and going until you, you achieve your task and then and then you can look back and be hugely satisfied with your with your effort. I guess it's a real it's a real testament as well, you know, like the mind and the body is an amazing thing and you can do so much. So it's how much you can access that and then utilize it. So you know it's been an amazing mission seeing those those chamois up close, uh, scaling some new country, exploring lots of new country, and then just doing huge miles. So really happy with the with the result. Anyway guys, I hope you really enjoyed this one. It was a I would say yeah, it's a pleasure, I guess. It's a pleasure, pleasure doing it. I really enjoy this stuff. 
uh, and I guess yeah, till next time, but hey, it's always an epic, always. Have a good one.